All right. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back for day number three of Virtual Deer. Thank you to those of you who have been, dare I say, tuning in each day. Uh, this is like back in the olden times, as some of you may say, when we had to sit around and listen to the radio as opposed to watching TV. So um, at least we still have a picture of the text in front of us. I apologize again. I know it's not entirely clear and the page numbers on screen here are different than the ones in the book. For those of you lucky enough to have a book with you at home, know that we are starting on page 99. Um, I came to my attention when I was looking closely at my notes yesterday that the page differences are much different. Uh, we started with only five or six page difference, but uh, know that if you're reading at home, you're already on page 99, whereas um, that same content is page 66 in this version of the book. It's the same story, just different page numbering. Yesterday we left off, Star was at the precinct with her mother. The precinct is the police station where they are reporting their side of what happened that fateful day with Khalil. And um, as we know, um, Star and her mom are a little uncomfortable around the cops and their line of questioning. But we're going to backstep a little bit just to have a recap from yesterday, and then we'll continue to see what's next. Thank you so much again for listening, and don't forget, be sure to check out that For the Love of Reading or your novel study lab projects if you're looking to use this content to get credit as well. All right, I'm trusting, I'm setting my trusty timer so we don't go over our film time, our record time. Here we go. So again, they're talking with the officers. She's laying it on extra thick. Please have a seat, Gomez points to a chair, and she and Wilkes sit across from us. Just so you know, you're being recorded, but it's simply so we can have Star's statement on record. Okay, I say, there it is again, all perky. I'm never perky. Detective Gomez gives the date and time and the names of the people in the room and reminds us that we're being recorded. Wilkes scribbles in his notebook. Mama rubs my back. For a moment, there's only the sound of pencil on paper. All right then. Gomez adjusts herself in her chair and smiles, the lines around her mouth deepening. Don't be nervous, Star. You haven't done anything wrong. We just want to know what happened. I know I haven't done anything wrong, I think, but it comes out as, yes, ma'am. And again, remember the italicized font are the thoughts inside Star's mind, whereas those in quotation marks are the words she says out loud. You're 16, right? Yes, ma'am. How long did you know Khalil? Since I was three, his grandmother used to babysit me. Wow, she says, I'll teach her like stretching out the word. That's a long time. Can you tell us what happened the night of the incident? You mean the night he was killed? And as you can see, the S word. Gomez smiles, dims. The lines around her mouth aren't as deep, but she says the night of the incident, yes. Star, start where you feel comfortable. I look at Mama, she nods. My friend Kenya and I went to a house party hosted by a guy named Darius, I say. And I thump, 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 drum the table with my thumbs. And I am thinking, stop, no sudden moves. I lay my hands flat to keep them visible. So she's thinking back to her, um, those discussions she had with Maverick about how to behave in front of cops. He is one every spring break, I say. Khalil saw me, came over and said hello. So Darius has a party each spring break. Do you know why he was at the party, Gomez asks? Why does anybody go to a party, I think? To party. I assume it was for recreational purposes, I say. He and I talked about things going on in our lives. What kind of things, she questions. His grandmother has cancer. I didn't know until he told me that evening. I see, Gomez says. What happened after that? A fight occurred at the party, so we left together in his car. Khalil didn't have anything to do with the fight? I raise an eyebrow. Nah. And then she's thinking to herself, oh, remember, proper English. I sit up straight. I mean, no, ma'am. We were talking when the fight occurred. Okay, so you two left. Where were you going? He offered to take me home or to my father's grocery store before we could decide. 115 pulled us over. Who, she asks? The officer. That's his badge number, I say. I remember it. Wilkes scribbles. I see, Gomez says. Can you describe what happened next? I don't think I'll ever forget what happened, but saying it out loud, that's different and hard. Again, she's trying to use her most powerful voice or her most powerful weapon, her voice, and she's struggling to speak up. My eyes prickle. I blink, staring at the table. Mama rubs my back. Look up, Star. My parents have this thing where they never want me or my brothers to talk to somebody without looking them into their eyes. 
They claim that a person's eyes say more than their mouth and that it goes both ways. If we look someone in their eyes and mean what we say, they should have little reason to doubt us. I look at Gomez. Khalil pulled over to the side of the road and turned the ignition off. I say, 115 put his brights on. He approached the window and asked Khalil for his license and registration. Did Khalil comply, Gomez asks. He asked the officer while he pulled us over first. Then he showed his license and registration. Did Khalil see my rate during this exchange? Annoyed, not irate, I say. He felt that the cop was harassing him. Did he tell you this? No, but I could tell. I assumed the same thing myself. Gomez scoots closer. Maroon lipstick stains her teeth and her breath smells like coffee. And why was that? Breathe, I think. The room isn't hot. You're nervous. So she's trying to talk herself down, calm her nerves. Some of you may have heard about grounding before, thinking about things you can touch, taste, see, uh, trying to reduce your tension by just thinking of things that make you either happy, like our happy place, or uh, just trying to breathe, like they say. Because we weren't doing anything wrong, I say. Khalil wasn't speeding or driving recklessly. It didn't seem like he had a reason to pull us over. I see. What happened next? The officer forced Khalil out of the car. Forced, she says? Yes, ma'am. He pulled him out because Khalil was hesitant, right? Mama makes this throaty sound, like she was about to say something, but stopped herself. She purses her lips and rubs my back in circles. You can see they're uncomfortable with this line of questioning. It seems very one-sided, trying to protect the cop. I remember what daddy said. Don't let them put words in your mouth. No, ma'am, I say to Gomez. He was getting out on his own, and the officer yanked him the rest of the way. She says, I see. Again, but he didn't see it. So she probably, but she didn't see it, so she probably doesn't believe it. What happened next, she asks. The officer patted Khalil down three times. Three? Yeah, I counted, I was thinking. Yes, ma'am, he didn't find anything. He then told Khalil to stay put while he ran his license and registration. But Khalil didn't stay put, did he, she says. He didn't pull the trigger on himself either. And then she's um, thinking some you know, adult language here that you can read for yourself. The detectives glance at each other, a moment of silent conversation. The walls move in closer. The grip around my lungs returns. I pull my shirt away from my neck, so she's feeling like it's hard to breathe. I think we're up. I think we're done for today, Mama says, taking my hand as she starts to stand up. But Mrs. Carter, we're not finished. I don't care. Gotta love when Mom stand up for us. Mom, I say, and she looks down at me. It's okay. I can do this. She gives them a glare to she gives a glare similar to the one she gives me and my brothers when we pushed her to the limit. Sort of like how when Miss Siobhan has to say enough sometimes to some of you. But uh, she sits down but holds on to my hand. Okay, Gomez says. So he patted Khalil down and told him he would check his license and registration. What next? Khalil opened the driver's side door and pow, pow, pow blood. Tears crawled down my cheeks. I wiped them on my arm. The officer shot him. Do you, Gomez starts, but Mama holds a finger toward her. Could you please give her a second, she says. It sounds more like an order than a question. Gomez doesn't say anything. Wilk scribbles some more. My mom wipes some of my tears off my, or my wipes some, my mom wipes some of my tears for me. Whenever you're ready, she says, I swallow the lump in my throat and nod. Okay, Gomez says and takes a deep breath. Do you know why Khalil came to the door, Star? I think he was coming to see if I was okay. You think? I'm not a telepath, I was thinking. Yes, ma'am. He started asking but didn't finish because the officer shot him in the back. More salty tears fall on my lips. Gomez leans across the table. We all want to get to the bottom of this, Star. We appreciate your cooperation. I understand this is hard right now. I wipe my face on my arm again. Yeah, yeah. She smiles and says in that same sugary, sympathetic tone. Now, do you know if Khalil sold narcotics? There's a pause. W-T-F. My tears drop. For real. My eyes get dry with the quickness. Before I can say anything, my mom goes, what does that have to do with anything? It's only a question, Gomez says. Do you, Star? All the sympathy, the smiles, the understanding, 
this chick was baiting me, investigating or justifying. So was she trying to find the truth or were her questions justifying giving reasons for the theory they already had? So investigating, as a fancy term for finding facts, justifying means finding facts to support an opinion. So investigating, gathering facts for information, justifying, gathering facts for opinion. The uh, star and her mom are questioning the police motives. I know the answer to her question. I knew it when I saw Khalil at the party. He never wore new shoes and jewelry. Those little 99 cent chains he bought at the beauty supply store didn't count. Miss Rosalie just confirmed it. So she did know that Khalil was dealing drugs. But what the hell does that have to do with him getting murdered? Is that supposed to make all of this okay? Gomez tilts her head. Star, can you please answer the question? I refuse to make them feel better about killing my friend. I straighten up, look Gomez dead in her eyes and say, I never saw him sell drugs or do drugs. But do you know if he sold them, she asks. He never told me he did, I say, which is true. Khalil never flat out admitted it to me. Do you have knowledge of him selling them? I heard things, also true, she sighs. I see. Do you know if he was involved with the King Lords? No. The Garden Disciples? No. Did you consume any alcohol at the party, she asks. I know that move from Law and Order. She's trying to discredit me. So she's trying to paint the picture that Star didn't have her wits about her, that she wasn't able to uh, remember all these details in um, such specific detail. She's trying to discredit me. No, I don't drink. Did Khalil? Whoa, wait a second, Mama says. Are you all putting Khalil and Star or on trial or the cop who killed him? Wilkes looked up from his notes. I, I don't quite understand, Miss Carter, Gomez sputters. You haven't asked my child about that cop yet, Mama says. You keep asking her about Khalil like she's the reason he's dead. Like she said, he didn't pull the trigger. Like she said, he didn't pull the trigger on himself. We just want the whole picture, Mrs. Carter. That's all. 115 killed him, I say, and he wasn't doing anything wrong. How much of a bigger picture do you need? We're going to pause there for right now. As you know, we're reaching our 15 minute limit. I want you to just think back for a couple minutes, reflect on how does Star speak at this precinct? Describe the interview. So just to yourself, think of the code switching that she went through and the proper language. How does she speak at the precinct? And finally, why do Star and her mom get angry about the officer's line of questioning? Why do you think they're heated? We've talked about investigating and justifying. The questions seem to be pretty one-sided, but take a moment, think about that for yourself. I'll get our camera set up for the next, and we'll see you super soon.